Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to Easter worship, all of you near and far in this version of Easter worship at the time we find ourselves in. We're grateful for the vocalists, the musicians, and the staff that have actually made this worship and that of Holy Week available to each of you. We trust this will be a meaningful experience as the way it is, we worship on Easter Sunday, the opening hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people towards the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading this Easter Sunday comes from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord, our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from the book of Colossians. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. 
When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, you, Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came back and rolled the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He's not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He's been raised from the dead. And indeed, he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and joy, great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We pray together. Gracious Lord, we give thanks for the wonder of Easter. Even now, amidst the consternations we face, the challenges made known, we apprehend in faith your word to us. Be not afraid. May that word be spoken to our hearts and be a source of comfort and strength today and in the days that lie ahead. Through Christ, the risen one, we do pray. Amen. So grace and peace from God our Father and from the Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Oh boy, how I miss all the ingredients this morning. You know, the varying components we so often associate with Easter Day. The Easter atmosphere, if you will. You know, flowers and banners, a table set for many to receive the Holy Eucharist, a stellar senior choir anthem, a youth-filled breakfast. But surely most of all, on this weird Easter Sunday, most of all, the missing are the people of God. The people of God physically present to one another, serving as living reminders of Easter Day and the promises made known therein. So I have missed you, dear people of God, 
not only on this Easter Sunday, but during this time frame, and certainly during this Holy Week, all of us coping with this virus. It has been a difficult week for me, as I'm sure for you. So accustomed as I am over the years with you to be your pastor during this week, and the ties that we have together in the significance of the week, and finally, the tie of the resurrection spirit that binds us to one another. So, it was difficult. In my missing, however, I also remember a calling. A calling in the current moment. The word, which still needs to be indicated. The proclamation in the current hour. Because even in the missing, the feelings along with you, I have no doubt, of incompleteness, of a kind of void. There is this one thing that still remains true absent the many things that also are true. It is the promise of Easter. You see, all of the Easter extras that I just alluded to, they only exist for purposes of indicating, pointing to, signifying, what is the real cause for celebration on this day? And that is the promise of Easter. While all the aforementioned ingredients, and yes, of course, the vital nature of us gathering together in the flesh to remind, to embrace, to exchange the peace of Christ, so critical, but still the salient point is a word given to us today. The word which has caused for us to gather in the first place when we do. The word from an angel to two terrified women. Do not be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. It is likely true that the two women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, went to the tomb for some of the same reasons that any of us go to a tomb or a headstone or a niche to remember a loved one, to perhaps to give thanks for their life, maybe to grieve, maybe to stand in the silence of the moment, allowing the tears to flow in the missing of one gone before us. But that would be us like the Marys going still to visit the dead. And suddenly in the text, an earthquake. An angel sitting on top of a stone looking like lightning. Shaking guards experiencing their own kind of personal earthquake. And a word, do not be afraid. He is not here. He has been raised. And he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. The Easter event, then and now, encompassing past, Jesus who is raised. Present, Jesus who's going ahead of you. Future, Jesus who will see you. The Easter event in time and beyond time not held captive by our fear, 
filled lives or our limited imaginations. Indeed, to the contrary, Easter's word breaking down our bondage to fear, breaking down our expectations of what always will be to a surprising God who raises the dead. This is my message for you, so the angel told the women. This is my message for you. He has been raised from the dead. And so they left the tomb quickly with fear, but a different kind of fear now, simply awe and joy and ran to the disciples. You can feel it in the text. You can feel the difference in the text from two sullen women going to visit the dead to now two awestruck women filled with joy running to Jesus' disciples. You can imagine the exuberance having been set free from the bondage to fear and death having been set free from the expected to receive an alternative word, a hope-filled word amidst a graveyard, surrounded in this word by hope. You see, it is hard to have hope in a graveyard. It is hard to have hope in the graveyard, quite literally, of a virus killing thousands, lingering around us. And so many of us now approach these days expecting to visit the dead. And our fears like those of women long ago, monopolize our thoughts and imprison us in houses of anxiety and despair. And then the words, the sometimes less than comforting words, the never-ending pablum and platitudes simply don't hit. We're all in this together. Our thoughts and prayers stay home, stay healthy, and we lean in, hoping for an alternative narrative in the graveyard. An alternative to our current fear and anxiety. But fear, fear jams up the gospel. It is hard to hear the gospel when fear dominates the scene. When the language of fear and the seemingly unending words of hopelessness steep our lives in fear. But it is not the preacher's job to pretend that such fear does not exist. To minimize the current loss of life in the world globally and then to call upon a magic Jesus in times of trouble. Not unlike some preachers we've heard about in Florida and Louisiana and certainly other places in the Union, indicating to their flock that the church does not abide by governing officials because we follow a king of kings who is lord of lords, not what we're told is healthy for a community. 
This response is not an honest rendering the gospel. Indeed, I would suggest, do not tempt the Lord your God, as if to suggest to your people, if you get the virus, we'll pray to the resurrected Jesus, and he will heal you. That sounds more like Satan's temptation. Turn the stones into bread. Jump off the pinnacle of the temple. Your angels will save you. With these preachers, this is just another form of denial. Of a failure to name the pain of their own people. Of addressing the real grief that people are experiencing in their lives. And bringing into the same the resurrected one. Who still bears the scars of a broken humanity. It is this scarred Jesus that the women encountered along the road who suddenly met them, surprisingly comes to them and says, Hi, what's up? How are you doing? Yes, it can be translated greetings. It can be translated, peace be with you as well. But at this word of greeting to the women, there is this recognition of the Messiah. And the only thing they can do is bow at his feet, at his scarred feet. Perhaps reminiscent of a prior act with water and basin. And they worshipped him. The crucified and resurrected Lord. And in the final verse of this account from the 28th chapter of Matthew, what is Jesus' word to the women? The same word that the angel had spoken before. Do not be afraid. Go. Go and tell my brothers. I love this text, part of the text, because it's as if the resurrection has already, already intruded itself so beautifully into the world. Jesus says, don't be afraid and go and tell my brothers. You know what he doesn't say? He says, don't be afraid and go tell the cowards. Go tell the betrayers. Go tell the deniers. Go tell the doubters. He says, go tell my brothers. Go tell my brothers. Jesus knows what fear does to people. He knew from the original 12 to the moment in the world that we find ourselves in. He knows of our humanity. He knows of our perplexity. He knows the sense of being overwhelmed by sorrow and the feelings of being abandoned by God. You recall, my God, my God, why hast thou? But his word remains to us and for us. Do not be afraid. It is the word of the Lord on this Easter 2020. As we peer out and see the cause for fear. But you see, it is a word for us who th seek things above. For us whose life is hidden with Christ. That finally, whatever is the current reality, does not shape our final response. Because our final response is an Easter word, not bound by time or space. An Easter word encompassing past, present, and future. An Easter word, the tomb is empty. Oh, we desperately need to hear this word. We need an empty tomb world word when we find ourselves in the graveyard of a virus, 
We need an empty tomb word when we cannot be physically present for Easter with those we love. We need an empty tomb word when we ponder a life right now without a job. We need an empty tomb word as the numbers rise with our fears. And the empty tomb word is Easter. Christ has risen. The tomb is empty because he was not there. He is with you here. Now, offering a word. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Life against death. Hope against despair. Light against dark. From a suffering Messiah who was raised from the dead. And now, with great joy, against all odds, we celebrate Easter. A most blessed Easter to each and every one of you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. It is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Easter hymn.
we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share the peace of the Lord in your home places or where you happen to be. This, of course, would often be our time for offering. We look forward to your response to the mission ministry of Mountain View Lutheran Church. And with grateful hearts, we are thankful for how faithful you've been amidst the circumstance we find ourselves in. So continue with your Easter offering. God of glory, receive receive these gifts gifts and and the offerings of our lives. As As Jesus Jesus was lifted lifted up from the earth, draw us to your heart heart in the midst midst of this world, world, that all creation may be brought from bondage to freedom, freedom, from from darkness darkness to light, and from from death death to life. life. Through Jesus Christ, our our Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. 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 Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and all places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Resurrected one, we give thanks on this day for the promise of new life, of new life glimpse in the current realm and a new life promise after our death. We give you thanks for the resurrection, living hope. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Holy God, as two women approached the tomb, they did so in fear and great anxiety. We now traverse this earth much the same, in fear and great anxiety. We need your comforting word. Do not be afraid. May we receive that word and embrace it in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those near and far, locally and globally, who are experiencing the sorrow of this illness known as the coronavirus. We pray for wisdom for physicians, for nurses, for those who are researching the virus, that a vaccine may be found. Grant them a measure of your strength during these days. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for families within this congregation of faith and those extended beyond this community of faith, for parents seeking to respond to the lives of their children amidst a fear-filled world. We pray for teachers seeking to care for students from afar, 
We ask for your blessing on the caregivers in the world in which we live. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. It is with Easter promise that we abide nonetheless in the confidence which is ours in Christ Jesus. Fill our hearts, O Lord, with your boldness even now, that the word, do not be afraid, may apprehend our hearts even still. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray with those for those who are experiencing illness of whatever kind during this time, for those experiencing loneliness, sorrow, and for those that are experiencing joy and new birth, for James and Melinda Longabal, and the Longabal family, and Rod and Chris Ray, grandparents, in the birth of Tate, as life continues. We pray with thanksgiving for Lauren Gentry, who is declared in remission from cancer. We pray with Jerry Stevenson as he continues to recover from successful stent surgery. And for those that we would name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Hear. prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.